Once upon a time, the United States had the ability to go to the moon. The moon is still there, but the hardware isn't. The Apollo Saturn V moon rocket was the biggest rocket ever built. In one vehicle, it carried enough fuel and rocket engines to transport a space capsule and lunar lander to the moon and bring the capsule back to Earth. To do the same today, NASA proposes building an Ares V rocket that would cost an infinite amount of money and time to build. The U.S. would also build a new version of the Apollo capsule called the Orion, which, like the Ares, would cost an infinite amount of money and time. But if we really want to go back to the moon, let's do it cheaply, with safe off-the-shelf components. For example, here's the Russian Soyuz spacecraft. It's inexpensive and has a proven safety record. The U.S. could purchase Soyuz capsules or build its own version. This makes more sense than trying to reinvent the wheel with a new capsule at enormous cost. As for the launch vehicle, let's use the Delta IV Heavy. It's capable of placing 23,000 kilograms into orbit, which is more than one-sixth the lift capacity of an Apollo moon rocket. We just have to use six rockets instead of one. Let's picture how a cheap, off-the-shelf lunar mission would take place in the next few years. First, we start with six liftoffs of Delta Heavy launch vehicles to place payloads into orbit. Once in orbit, teleoperated robots are used to shepherd the components together. The calculations for orbital rendezvous were too complex for the computers of the 1960s, but today any laptop or tablet computer is more than up to the task. Now, rather than having one vehicle head toward the moon, we'll send three. Here we see transorbital booster rockets pushing a capsule, a lunar lander, and another transorbital booster from Earth orbit toward the moon. Once lunar orbit is achieved, the empty boosters are separated from their payloads. In orbit, under remote control, the as-yet unmanned lunar lander will be maneuvered into position with the space capsule which has the mission astronauts aboard. Once the two vehicles are joined, the astronauts will transfer from the capsule to the lander. The lunar lander will then descend to the surface of the moon, just like the landers in the Apollo program did so long ago. The landing will be much safer than the Apollo landings because it will be under computer control and the surface of the moon has been surveyed in much greater resolution over the decades. Once on the surface, the astronauts will explore just as they did with Apollo. And just as with Apollo, the lunar lander upper stage will blast off from the moon and have a rendezvous with the still orbiting capsule. The astronauts will transfer from the lander to the capsule and prepare for the trip home. Abandoning the lander, the capsule will join up with the remaining transorbital booster. Then the astronauts will head back to Earth orbit, mission accomplished. December 2012 will mark the 40th anniversary since the last human mission to the moon. The intervening years have seen tremendous progress, yet sometimes it's hard to believe that we were ever there. We can go back, but not by using old technology and it seems pointless to build expensive new technology to duplicate what could be done 40 years ago. Instead, let's use existing technology as much as possible and build on the decades of expertise and experience we've gained in working in space so that instead of packing everything into a single rocket, we can integrate multiple payloads in space. If we do it that way, the moon is not so far away.